give uh, this uh, update, the last update we gave four years ago. Thank you. Can I close the door? Any questions? we held our first block party and um, it was August um, last year the fifth year block party was October and we had we blocked off the alley perfect day wonderful day wonderful time with everyone in the neighborhood we had seven bands we had a uh, local caterer Mr. Seville right along the road on Ellis Street and then, um, and we uh, we had about 400 we estimated about 400 and we're looking forward to uh, doing this again uh, this year uh, and, uh, and just put the word out there for like early planning the last year was a little, our first year was a little rush and now we have the time uh, to, to actually have more input from the entire community on what a block party would look like uh, in the application. Thank you. Okay, our next presenter, um, 450. Uh, Church of Christ Scientist, which currently occupies uh, that building. They couldn't be with, uh, with us here today, but want to let you know a little bit about the project we've come before you before uh, a couple months ago. Uh, coming back in front of you tonight, give you a little bit of an update. Uh, I'm sure there's some new faces in the crowd as well, so this may be the first time some of you hear about the project, so there's an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more, uh, some questions at the end. Uh, after a little slideshow that we have for you just to get everyone oriented. Still learning how to use this thing, so I apologize. I think you have to point at the computer. There we go. Ah. All right. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about a couple things tonight. Uh, I mentioned uh, who the project team is. We'll get a few more details there. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the church history. Some of you may already know that. It'll be good for everyone to learn. Uh, we'll have some pictures of the existing building. I'll talk about the project kind of at a, a high level, talk about kind of our vision, what we're trying to work with, we'll see some pictures, uh, talk some of the community benefits that we're hoping to achieve, and we'll let you know a little bit about our schedule. And then, as I mentioned, at the end, there will be an uh, opportunity for questions. So if you hold all questions to the end, it'll be, it'll be better to handle them all then. Uh, can everyone see this all right? Can everyone see? Yeah. Uh, so the property at 450 O'Farrell Street is a, is a church right now. It's the Fifth Church of Christ Scientists. They've been uh, there for quite a long time. Uh, they have partnered with us, Thompson Dorfman. We're a, a development company locally based here in the Bay Area, kind of a small to mid-sized company. We only do projects in the Bay Area. We don't do stuff kind of all over the place. Uh, we do mainly infill housing, uh, really focus on that. We like to do kind of the mixed use stuff. We do something retail or interesting, you're going on the ground floor, activate the space, and doing housing above it. Uh, it's been our, our model for a while. 
Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the church. Uh, as I said, the church has been in neighborhood for a very, very long time. This is the, the Church of Christ Scientist. This is not Scientology. I always have to clarify that. Uh, so this is not Scientology. Uh, the Fifth Church of Christ Science is really focused on kind of study and prayer. Walking around town, you may have uh, walked past uh, reading rooms, like uh, Christian Science reading rooms. It's a, that's a big component of their mission. Uh, here. A little bit more about uh, who we are as Thompson Griffin. A lot of people don't know who we are, but I'm going to kind of understand what the church does. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're, uh, we're residential developers, uh, typically build kind of urban infill projects. Something else we spend a lot of our time on is uh, a nonprofit arm we have called Education Housing Partners. Uh, we partner with local school districts to help build housing for teachers. Uh, everyone knows that teachers don't get paid enough money and housing costs are really high. And it's really tough for districts to retain teachers during tough times. So we like to uh, help out with that. We usually offer advisory services. Uh, school districts are typically not equipped with the, the experience to build housing projects. So we come in and offer advisory services to them. We have a couple projects down with this. These are all ones that have already been built. Uh, we have a couple more there right now. Just to be clear, this is not a, uh, a teacher housing project on the O'Farrell site, but just to give you an idea of kind of what we spend our time doing. So a little bit about the church history for those of you who may not be super familiar with it. Uh, we have a, a nearly 100-year-old church. It's um, 27,000 square feet. It's really big. Uh, for context, it's like it's like half an acre. It's, it's fairly large. Uh, it's an old kind of neoclassical structure. It has these columns in the front. Uh, has some kind of interesting design details at the top, some detailing, some molding, things like that. Uh, it's been in the neighborhood, as I said, for a very long time. It's built in 1923. You can see the, the picture on the left. Uh, what cars used to look like back then? They obviously look a lot different now. Uh, on the right is just a, a very quick rendering of what the project looks like in the current proposed state. There'll be more pictures later on. I think the thing that I want to focus on here is just that the, the church facade, as you can see right here, pretty large, uh, pretty old. We're actually keeping the facade as part of the project right here, but the church is not going to be here. The church is going to have a new space right here. Uh, the purpose of the project is really to give the church a new home in the area. Uh, they've had a lot of trouble maintaining their current building. It's very tough to maintain some of these old historic structures. Uh, so they'd like to downsize, really, a little bit. Uh, we're closing a, a smaller church space within a, a, a mixed-use housing project. Uh, some other things about the church, uh, I don't know if any of you have been in it, but it uh, has stained glass windows, has a kind of a stained glass oculus, just like a big geodesic dome in the ceiling. Uh, there's bronze doors, pipe organ, uh, some other kind of interesting, cool historical features. We're actually going to be pulling all that out of the old church, restoring it, and we're going to be putting it back in into the new space. So kind of the cooler character-defining features of the building are going to be retained, which I think is a, a big win. Just in case anyone uh, doesn't know where we are in the world here, uh, we are at the corner of, this is O'Farrell here, and this is Jones. This is O'Farrell here, and then Jones is just around the corner. Um, so, as you can see, we have uh, a larger church here, right, it extends up uh, Shannon Alley. So the alley that we were just discussing, Amos's project is, is right, <laughs> this, is, this is his alley. This is, this is where all of the, the veterans are projects are, right? Uh, so actually well-timed that we followed one another. Yeah. Uh, so a couple other things. The, the project site you can see is outlined here. There's a little dog leg that uh, fronts to Jones Street, so it's not a perfect square. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than that. Uh, you'll see that we don't actually have this in the project, so the project wraps around uh, another building that's at the corner proper of Jones and O'Farrell. Uh, and that is the Pacific Bay Inn, which is here. This is not part of the project. This, will, this the building will not be touched. Uh, swinging around to the other side here, you can see the, the facade again. You can see kind of not a great, not, not the church's best side. Uh, it's kind of carried in paint here. Uh, and then we also have a building right here next to the church that is also part of the project. Uh, it's an old storefront, has not been occupiable for a long time due to seismic safety concerns. Uh, we have uh, it's boarded up in the front. There's a little bit of art on it now, uh, but that is also part of the project. So both of these will be will be redeveloped as part of the project. <coughs> Excuse me. So to to recap, the project's proposing uh, a new church space. We're going to have a new reading room at the at the sidewalk level. 
It's going to be a Sunday school as well. So the church is going to have some offices. We're going to put in a number of the character defining features, the stained glass windows, the organ, all of that. We're going to be retaining the, the column facade of the current structure uh, as part of the, the full project. And then, as I mentioned before, we're going to be downsizing the church, 27,000 square feet down to 10,000 square feet. Uh, and then the rest of the project will be a, a mixed-use housing project. Uh, we're closing a 130-foot high building, uh, about 13 stories. That's all within the current uh, height and bulk limits. We have 176 housing units. We're planning 6,200 square feet of retail space in two separate uh, spaces, one along O'Farrell and another along Jones. Uh, there'll be a little bit of car parking, not a lot. We feel like it's a really transit-rich area. A lot of people can walk around and bike. I uh, will only be proposing to put in one level of underground uh, parking but we're proposing to have uh, quite a bit more of uh, uh, bike parking, a much higher in terms of a ratio, I have uh, almost 150 bike spaces. Uh, we're also proposing to satisfy uh, affordable housing requirements uh, on site as opposed to paying fees or building a, a separate project elsewhere. Uh, currently planning 28 units uh, below market rate housing, it's about 16% for those of you tracking that. You can come back to this if you guys need as well. Uh, more pictures of the, of the full project here. So again, uh, Shannon Alley down here, this is at uh, O'Farrell. We're going to be retaining and restoring the facade of the current church. Uh, we'll be building a larger building behind it. It'll be uh, kind of a different colored massing here, which will have the new church space in the first few floors there. Down Shannon Alley, uh, there's going to be our uh, entrance to the parking garage. Wanted to put the parking garage off of O'Farrell. Uh, for those of you who've driven down O'Farrell, can get a little congested if there's only one uh, one dedicated lane for traffic. Now there's a dedicated lane for uh, for the buses. Didn't think it was a good idea to put a, a garage ramp along O'Farrell, uh, so we're going to be proposing to have that along uh, Shannon Alley. This view, you can see the church space a little bit better. Uh, church space will be right here. Uh, they'll have Kind of, you'll be able to walk past, be able to look in, see the reading room, uh, see the church, be publicly accessible reading room. Uh, one of the biggest complaints that the church has right now is that it's just, it doesn't interact very well with the street and with the community. Uh, the historic building is very, very nice, the current building, but uh, it can feel a little bit like a fortress. Not a lot of people want to come inside. Uh, the, the columns can be very foreboding. It was kind of the whole purpose of the, the Greeks and the Romans building that kind of thing. So we want something that's a little bit more transparent, a little bit more uh, light-filled, excuse me. Uh, and that's really the, the reason for the, the church design right now as it is. Uh, this is just looking dead on as if you're across the street a little bit. You can see the facade here again. Uh, there will be entrances to the residential portion that's in some of the retail uh, portions here. And then this will be the entrance to the church. And again, the church space will be roughly in this piece right here. I talk about community engagement a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, this is our second time coming in front of, of this group. We've also had dozens of meetings with other groups. Uh, are actively trying to spread the word, make sure that everyone knows that this project is going to happen. Uh, nothing's worse than opening your window and waking up one morning and finding out there's a construction project right next to you and you had no idea about it. Uh, we realize that construction can pose a little bit of a nuisance to communities that construction occurs in. There's only so much we can do to, to limit, limit that, but we want to make sure that everyone knows about the project, everyone has an opportunity to understand what the project is, an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, so that's really a big uh, thing that we're focusing on right now. Uh, met with a, a number of faith-based communities, given the church's uh, faith-based uh, position. Also trying to just meet with other community-based organizations, trying to meet with other, uh, other residents in the area. Uh, also met with a couple of uh, our neighboring uh, buildings. There's a couple of uh, SROs tender. My housing clinic owns one, uh, for example. So that, that's really something we're, we're focused on right now. Uh, we've also had a couple of publicly noticed community meetings. We're going to be having another one next month. I uh, just want to make sure absolutely everyone knows about the project. Uh, like, because as I said, it's very unfortunate when you find out about it uh, when it's too late. i talk a little bit about some of the benefits the project is going to provide. Uh, we think it and the entire purpose of the project is to keep the church in the Tenderloin. Uh, I don't have to tell anyone with this room that there are a number of faith-based organizations in the Tenderloin. They're all community assets. Uh, it would be a shame to lose one just because the building doesn't match the organization or the organization doesn't match the building. 
Uh, so in order to do that, the, the church just wants to downsize and want to build new space for themselves. Uh, most community-based organizations just don't have the expertise or the patience to go through the planning department, uh, go through all of that process. So that's kind of the reason why we partner with them. Uh, there's going to be a new church. There'll be a public reading room. Uh, we're going to have the uh, activate the sidewalks a little bit more with those those retail spaces, as I mentioned. Uh, increase the interaction with the sidewalk and with the public. Uh, hoping to do something interesting and cool along Shannon Alley. I think there's a lot of good stuff going there, there already. Uh, but there's just more opportunities. Uh, where the there isn't art right now along Shannon Alley, let's say uh, along the, uh, the portion of the facade of the building uh, on the west side or along the parking lots in the back, there's nothing really going on there right now. Uh, so there's, we think there's more opportunities to do that. Uh, we're going to be uh, rebuilding some of the sidewalks, lighting, street trees. Uh, all of that's part of the design. Uh, and we're still talking to lots of other groups about other potential community benefits. And then a major, major community benefit we think is to, to actually build the affordable units as part of the project instead of deferring it until later. That's, it's, it's a real challenge in San Francisco. We, we think that's important to, to include it. <coughs> a little bit about the schedule. Everyone always wants to know about this. Uh, so we're currently going through our, our planning process with the planning department. Well, we anticipate uh, we're going through environmental review and doing design review right now. It's taken a really long time. We've been working on this project for three years now. Uh, church has been trying to work on it for 20 to 30 years. 30. 30. Uh, so we think that we'll come before the planning commission uh, sometime this summer. Uh, planning commission is the body that decides on projects like this. Uh, if that happens, if, if the schedule holds, uh, we'll start construction sometime early next year. And then projects of this size typically take around two years to build. So we'll have a brand new building in roughly early 2020. That's the idea. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, outreach is really important. If you have questions, of course, uh, please call or email Tr Tracy Gray, I'm, sitting, I'm that sitting, right, sitting right here. Uh, so please, please let us know if you. We have a. Uh, we have some. Uh, I think we have some cards up here, right, Tracy? Where people. Yeah, are. we have comment cards up there. Right. If you have yeah. comments, so, so, and they. Uh, wait, wait, wait. If, if Q&A isn't your thing, or if you don't want to speak publicly, we have some ways for you to interact with us. Uh, and I'll open up for questions. One question there. Yeah. Okay, question about um, having retail space. What kind of retail shops have you have? You know, we haven't, we haven't exactly uh, planned which types of businesses will be going in there. We, we're trying to keep a really open mind. We're actually, open to suggestions. Uh, we know that there are lots of kind of small grocers in the area. I'm not sure if that's the right fit. Uh, also, I mean, there's pretty open right now. We haven't uh, we haven't committed ourselves to anything. We also haven't ruled anything out. So if there's any, okay. any ideas, let us know. Okay. Yes, another question. Sorry, confused. Uh -huh. is, there, is there any way is there any way you could build 100% affordable? You know, um, <laughs> deal world, it would be. I'm not sure how we would pay for it. You're used to when a non-profit or a community-based organization builds housing you can The church owns owns property. So, well, I mean, so then the church, the, the, and it's a nonprofit. Uh, I mean, the landlord have to have cost is the uh, cost of the property. So it's the building above where it gets spent. Yeah, we've uh, we've because I mean that goes to what he was talking about for affordability. Because uh, one of the uh, uh, other forms of uh, way to uh, keep the cost down for housing. Land trusts, where the property is in a trust, and then the building above is uh, is uh, it's an affordable. So there are various ways, as well as nonprofits, I mean, developers have found ways to uh, subsidize so the cost of building is cheaper um, than uh, when you do a for profit. And obviously, your company that you're engaged is a for profit company. Right. Yeah. Noted. Bottom line. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely noted. And I think we were clear when we first came out here that, that we're at that kind of percentage. There's an endowment going to the Christian Science Church so that they can continue their operations there. They've been there for almost a, uh, I want to say, decade. Excuse me, a century. Um, and the bottom line, that's that's really what we land on. It can still be able to do the numbers. Yeah. But noted. Yes, Marvis. Oh, 